Do you need help interpreting your iron panel results? This is Dr. Eric Osansky, and in this video, I'll be discussing the components of an iron panel. I'll discuss some of the common causes of an iron deficiency, as well as the risks of iron overload. I will then go over some actual iron panel reports. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand their test results so that they can find and remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. Let's discuss the different markers included in an iron panel, starting with serum iron. This represents the concentration of circulating iron and is low in an iron deficiency and is elevated when someone has an iron overload. Most iron is bound to transferrin, which transports iron in the blood. As for the reference ranges, LabCorp has a reference range of 27 to 159 micrograms per deciliter. Quest Diagnostics has a reference range between 45 and 160, and the optimal reference range would be between 80 and 130 micrograms per deciliter. Let's now talk about iron saturation, and this is also referred to as transferrin saturation or percent saturation. So iron saturation tells us how much serum iron is actually bound to a protein called transferrin, which I mentioned on the previous slide. For example, if someone has a value of 20%, then this means that 20% of the iron binding sites of transferrin are being occupied by iron. A low value is common in iron deficiency, and a higher value is common in iron overload. Oral contraceptives and pregnancy can also increase this value. As for the reference ranges, LabCorp has a reference range of between 15 and 55%, Quest has a range of between 11 and 50%, and the optimal range is between 30 to 40%. Let's now talk about ferritin. Ferritin is an intracellular protein that stores iron, and it's decreased when someone has an iron deficiency, and it can be increased when someone has an iron overload. It is also considered to be an acute phase reactant, which means that it is commonly increased in the presence of inflammation. As a result, if someone has elevated ferritin levels, but the serum iron and iron saturation are either normal or depressed, then the high ferritin levels usually are related to inflammation. As for the reference ranges, LabCorp has a range of between 15 and 150 nanograms per milliliter. Quest has a reference range between 10 and 232. And the optimal reference range is between 45 to 120 nanograms per milliliter, although some sources suggest that it should be above 70 nanograms per milliliter. Total iron binding capacity, or TIBC, is an indirect measure of transferrin. So if TIBC decreases, then transferrin will also decrease, and the reverse is true as well. A high TIBC means that the iron stores are low. Sometimes on an iron panel, you might see unsaturated iron binding capacity, or UIBC, which also will increase when someone has a moderate to severe iron deficiency. As for the reference ranges, LabCorp has a range between 250 and 450 micrograms per deciliter. You can see that Quest Diagnostics has the same reference range as LabCorp, and the optimal reference range is between 300 to 375 micrograms per deciliter. I'd now like to talk about an iron deficiency along with some of the common causes. An iron deficiency relates to low serum iron and iron saturation, and many times ferritin is low, and you can have an iron deficiency with or without anemia. To determine if you have anemia, you would need to do a complete blood count, and it's also worth mentioning that if the RDW is elevated on a complete blood count, RDW is the width of the red blood cell, so if this is elevated, this usually is related to an iron deficiency. So what are some of the causes of an iron deficiency? Well, insufficient dietary intake, of course, can be one potential cause. Menstrual blood loss in cycling women. Low stomach acid is another potential cause of an iron deficiency. Gastrointestinal blood loss, as well as malabsorption due to conditions such as celiac disease or even a gut infection. And while supplementing with iron sometimes is necessary, of course, whenever possible, you want to address the cause of the iron deficiency. While many people are iron deficient, some people have an iron overload problem. This is defined as excess stores of iron in the body, and the danger with this is that excess iron is deposited in organs. The organs that are affected the most include the liver, heart, and endocrine glands. Primary iron overload is called hereditary hemochromatosis, although other causes include getting a blood transfusion, as well as excessive parenteral or dietary consumption of iron. 
An estimated 156 million Americans have iron overload, and 75% of these people don't have any symptoms. As for the treatment, a therapeutic phlebotomy is a common treatment, and if someone has hereditary hemochromatosis, then they might keep this under control by donating blood on a regular basis. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some iron panel reports. So here we see a pretty good iron panel. We see TIBC looking good, UIBC looking okay, serum iron 101, iron saturation 33, and ferritin at 112. And here TIBC looks good, UIBC looks okay, serum iron is 89, but we see iron saturation a little bit less than optimal at 24, and same with ferritin, less than optimal at 29. So in this case, we don't have ferritin, but we have iron is low, clearly low at 33, Iron saturation is within range, but definitely on the low side at 18. Usually we would see TIBC and UIBC on the higher side with an iron deficiency, but for some reason in this case, we see it on the lower side. And here we see iron is within range, but less than optimal at 69. Iron saturation also less than optimal at 18. And here we do see TIBC not elevated, but on the higher side and same with UIBC. And here we see iron at 122, which is looking pretty good. Iron saturation a little bit less than optimal, but, but not too bad at 29. And ferritin, you can see ferritin is within range, but a little bit misleading just because a, a lot of medical doctors would just skim right past this because nothing is red flagged. But you can see the range is between 15 and 150. So if it was just one point lower, it would be red flagged as low, but as mentioned earlier, it's well below the optimal reference range. And this is probably why we see the TIBC on the higher side. And this is an example of iron overload. So we have serum iron at 182, iron saturation at 64, ferritin not too bad at 92. So ferritin isn't always elevated with iron overload. And we see TIBC on the lower side, still within range, but 283 on the lower side. And same UIBC is, uh, actually UIBC is low. As I mentioned in this video, certain problems with the gut can affect the absorption of iron. And if you're deficient in iron, then you might want to check out my gut testing videos where I discuss how to test for gut infections and a leaky gut. Just click on the video that appeared on your screen. And if you like this video, please don't forget to click on the like button and I'll catch you in the next video.